Hey everyone, Adam here with a RimWorld schedule guide. I often tell people that the best and most powerful thing I've ever developed in RimWorld is the biphasic schedule. I've been using it for three or four years and it's a game changer for me. However, biphasic isn't always the best schedule. So in this RimWorld guide, I will be talking about all things scheduling. So if you've been asking yourself, what is the best schedule or how do I set up scheduling? You've come to the right place. Well then, what is the best schedule? Like many questions in RimWorld, the answer is, it depends. If you want a terrific all-around schedule that you can use for everyone all the time, I do recommend my biphasic schedule. It has an incredibly powerful effect on mood and the schedule is extremely robust to the insane scenarios that happen in RimWorld. The biphasic schedule isn't really the best schedule, though. The best schedule is when you customize based on a ton of factors such as the balance of productivity and mood, your colonist's overall average mood, how much sleep your colonist needs, your colonist's jobs, your base layout, and even how much your colonists hate each other. In this example, I customized the biphasic schedule. This biphasic schedule is a great choice for essentially everyone. Set everything to anything, Start at hour 11, set four blocks of sleep, so that's sleep at 11, 12, 13, and 14, then jump to right before midnight. For 23, set sleep, then 0, 1, 2 as sleep as well. Then put two recreation before each block of sleep. Recreation 9 and 10, and 21, 22. That's the simple, fits everyone just fine, you don't have to think about it biphasic schedule. It is so powerful that you can even slap it on your night owls and they will still be happier on average than a typical night owl schedule. The main reason for using the biphasic schedule is its huge increase to mood. Click a colonist, click the needs tab. The biphasic schedule has significant effects on these three bars, rest, recreation, and comfort. Each notch on these bars corresponds to a different mood amount. For example, here's the recreation meter and here's the different thoughts between notches. The biphasic schedule fills the recreation meter twice a day. What most players call a standard RimWorld schedule fills all these only once a day. This double fill up helps increase mood because one, the colonist is at these high mood notches of comfort and recreation twice, and two, the three bars of recreation, rest, and comfort won't fall as far. Each of those three bars falls at a steady rate. After 16 hours awake, a standard schedule has these three meters here. The biphasic schedule will never let these bars get so low because recreation, rest, and comfort are refilled every 12 hours. Mood is higher because both these meters are at the top more, and these meters never drop as low as they would in a normal schedule. Here's two copies of the same colonist in the same base with the same jobs. On the right, biphasic schedule. On the left, standard scheduling. Watch the mood bars as the day progresses. Watch as the biphasic mood bar gets a boost from the midday nap. Generally, the biphasic schedule will have about this much effect on mood relative to a standard schedule. However, the biphasic schedule does come at a cost of productivity. In this example, the biphasic schedule mined 19 squares of steel. The standard schedule mined 23 squares of steel. This example's difference in productivity was about 20%. These schedules virtually always have the same amount of sleep per day. Total amount of sleep was not a factor in this productivity. The first big choice in scheduling, mood versus productivity. Generally, the standard schedule will give more productivity. Generally, the biphasic schedule will give more mood. Depending on so many different factors, you may care more about mood or more about productivity. The original reason I developed the biphasic schedule was that I found myself losing during raids, not because of the actual combat, because they would happen later in the day when everyone was at their lowest moods and energy. I'd often have breakdowns during raids and end up losing colonists or the entire run. Depending on your playstyle, difficulty setting, etc., this may not be as much of an issue for you. As such, I'm going to teach you about more potential schedules that have different costs and benefits that may align more with your gameplay. My general rule of thumb, however, would be you want enough mood to avoid all mental breaks, even minor mental breaks. There's no simple number for how much mood that would be as the circumstances and pawn types vary so much in RimWorld. What is good to keep in mind is that mood does not change instantly. Mood can only fall a maximum 8 per hour. In this example, the biphasic schedule is 12 mood over the minor break threshold. 
That's an hour and a half before minor breaks are even possible. Minus 99 Psychic Droner, still an hour and a half before minor break territory. At this moment in time, the colonist on standard schedule is at 24 mood. The biphasic is at 47 mood. That's 23 mood difference. The difference in mood isn't always going to be that big and it changes depending on tons of factors. It's virtually impossible to calculate the exact mood difference because, as I always say with Emerald, it depends. In my totally unscientific, not based on math, guesstimation from experience only, I'm going to say the difference in mood on biphasic schedule versus a standard schedule is about 16. That's two hours of mood falling. A long fight like this one is going to generate many mood debuffs. That's what the biphasic schedule gives you, two additional hours of drafting your colonists and making them suffer when things in RimWorld get really terrible. One reason for the difference in productivity is light. The biphasic schedule is sometimes going to cause colonists to work in the dark more often. In this example, the biphasic schedule colonists did work more in the dark. The super short summary of light is that you should consider working in the dark to mean lazy, four copies of Slowpoke, and pessimist. Night Owl and Undergrounder essentially removes the pessimist trait from working in the dark, but they do not remove work speed and move speed penalties. The majority of the difference in productivity in this example comes from the biphasic schedule's additional walking trip. Walking trips are time wasted. Time spent walking is time not spent working. If this example was very close, then walking trips wouldn't be a significant factor. If this example was further away, then walking trips would be an even more significant factor. Again, how much you care about walking trips is part of that it depends I mentioned earlier. Maybe your base is very compact and walking is minimal, for instance. Recreation and sleep are paired up to minimize the walking trips. When your colonist walks back home from work, you want them to fully fill up all three rest, recreation, and comfort bars. If recreation was separate from rest on the scheduling bar, then there would be another walking trip. For clarity, I'm calling the walk home and the walk back to work together as one singular walking trip. I'm also assuming beds and recreation are close to one another. On a schedule like this one, with recreation in the middle of the day, now there are two walking trips. One walking trip to fill up recreation, then another walking trip home to sleep. Simply by putting their recreation and rest together, we have eliminated the walking trip and thus increased productivity. Whether you have recreation before sleep or after or both is mostly personal preference. Personally, I prefer scheduling recreation before sleep. I would consider all of these schedules the standard schedule, and they all are potentially just fine. Whether you have one, two, or three bars of recreation does matter, and the answer will depend on several factors. The key overall concept is on one walking trip and fully filling up all recreation, rest, and comfort on that walking trip. In this example, I'm using one bar of recreation. The colonist notices recreation, the colonist walks home. The colonist fills up recreation. Then the colonist goes right to sleep. In this example, one bar was just right. If I set recreation to two bars in this example, the colonist will often make an extra walking trip. The colonist ends up filling up their recreation meter before the schedule sets them to sleep. The colonist then walks back to work, mines a rock, then walks all the way back to bed. That's time wasted. In this specific example, two bars was too long. In this example, I set the colonist to hunting. In this specific example, two bars is too small. The colonist ends up hunting through the entire double bar of recreation and misses recreation entirely. They go to sleep with recreation unfulfilled. Sometimes one recreation will be just right. Sometimes two recreation will be just right. And sometimes you may even need three. The answer will be different for each colonist and job combination. Unfortunately, the answer also may be different on different days for the same colonist. You may not get the answer just right every time, and that's all right. Watch your colonists. Take your best guess of what works most of the time for them. You also may have more luck doing recreation before sleep or after sleep or a little of both. As long as you're following the key concept, one walking trip, fill up all the bars, you're doing it right. If you are unsure, or you want a simple answer, I'd suggest just going with two before sleep. Smurf from my Discord, who helps with many of the guides for my channel, has made this handy chart that shows the mechanics of each scheduling option. Feel free to pause the video and use this as a reference, or you can always access it by heading over to my website, adamversuseverything.com slash guides. Meditation is only available with the Royalty DLC. 
Exact job selection is a little more complicated than shown here. Some things like firefighting may override the scheduling choices entirely. The most important thing to learn from this infographic is that work and meditation wake up a colonist that is asleep. A colonist waking up before filling up their rest bar goes against the most important rule. One walking trip, fill the bars. Meditation and work after sleep does matter and may cause issues with unfilled rest bars. The next notable thing is the difference between anything and work. Anything essentially means fix your problems. If there are no problems, then work. Work means ignore your problems. Work anyway. Generally, I recommend having colonists automatically fix their recreation and rest problems. That's why I generally recommend not scheduling any actual work bars. However, there may be times when you want your colonists to specifically ignore their problems. In those situations, use work. Another thing I'd like to point out is the thresholds for sleep. When sleep is scheduled, a colonist will only sleep if their rest bar is below 75%. A rest bar takes almost four hours to go from 100% to 75%. Also, a colonist will sleep through recreation in anything if their rest bar is not yet full. You don't have to get sleep exactly right. Your colonist will automatically sleep until full rest bar as long as you set anything or recreation after sleep. Remember, meditation or work will make them wake up early. Here are six colonists who all fell asleep at the same time and each has a different number of sleep bars scheduled. They all wake up when their rest hits 100%. Even the ones who are scheduled to continue to sleep don't immediately sleep again because their rest meter is still above that 75%. Getting sleep exactly right doesn't matter because the thresholds are very forgiving. Getting recreation exactly right matters because recreation can cause additional walking trips. I recommend your scheduling process be a three-step one. First, choose. How much do you care about mood versus productivity? How much do you care about light or other major factors? Here are some examples of general base schedules that need to be tweaked. Higher on the list means more productivity, but less mood. Lower on the list means more mood, but less productivity. There are many other great schedules that aren't even shown here. Step two, tweak. Adjust the precise amounts of recreation following the one walking trip fills the bar general rule. This is where we decide recreation before or after bed, it's also where we decide one, two, or three bars of recreation. Remember, there's no simple answer. This will heavily depend on your colonists, their jobs, and your base layout. If you want a general good guess, I recommend just using two bars of recreation before each block of sleep. Step three, shift the schedule accordingly. Most well-known shift is the night owl. That simply takes the standard schedule and shifts it about 12 hours. The two main other reasons to shift schedules are light and how much your pawns actually hate each other. The short of light is that midnight is the center point of darkness generally, and on each side of midnight there's around five hours of darkness. It can change based on time of year and the distance from the equator though. Generally, if you have colonists working outdoors, try to schedule as much of their recreation and rest inside the darkness period as you can in order to avoid mood, movement, and work speed penalties. If your colonist doesn't work in the dark, then you don't have to consider light at all. Social interactions in RimWorld get quite complicated. There are three things we can somewhat minimize via schedule shifting. Insults, social fights, and rebuffs. The super short summary of these social interactions is that the more your colonists dislike each other, the more likely bad things like these are to happen when colonists are within six tiles of each other. Shift the schedules of colonists likely to have issues to minimize their chance of seeing each other and having these things happen. Let's take our three-step process, choose, tweak, and shift, and apply it to some example scenarios you may face in your own game. Example one, start of a new game. Choose. Between initial optimism, low expectations, and a simple setup like this with flowers on the ground, mood can be under control for a long time. So choose, productivity and light. I recommend a standard one sleep schedule, just like the default. Tweak. I'm gonna start with two recreation before sleep. Let's see how it goes. Hunter's recreation is perfect on this specific day in this specific example base. Hunter walked home, he did some recreation and immediately went to sleep. For Hunter, two bars of recreation is just right. In this example, two recreation before sleep is not perfect for Chef, however. Chef stops planting and walks home to do recreation. Chef fills their recreation meter and is still on recreation, so they go back to work. They plant one heel root and then go to bed. 
that's an extra walking trip. However, it's a very short walking trip. It may or may not be worth fixing. It's up to you. There's no simple, always right answer to how much recreation. You may have more luck doing recreation after sleep or both before and after sleep. You also may not care much about the walking trips. In this example, Chef's walking trip is so short that it isn't a big deal for me. If you don't care about the walking trip and do care about mood, feel free to guesstimate on the higher end. If you don't care about mood and do care about walking trips, make it a little shorter. Try your best to follow the one walking trip fills up recreation rest and comfort general rule. If you aren't sure or don't want to deal with it, just do two recreation before sleep. Shift. Since light matters, we'll shift all three standard schedules one hour early to fit their eight hours of sleep and two hours of recreation, entirely in the 10 hours of darkness. Hunter is staggeringly ugly, creepy breathing, bloodlust. Let's shift Hunter's schedule a bit over to minimize social issues like social fights, insults, and rebuffs. The shift will cause the colonists to interact with each other less because they do recreation at different times. The shift causes some of the recreation and sleep to be out of the 10 hours of darkness, however, but the social issues are more important here. On to example two. What if Constructor is very neurotic, tortured artist? That's basically a minus 22 total mood penalty. Step one, choose. Light matters a lot, but having higher mood matters more here. Let's add a second block of recreation in the middle of the day. That adds a second walking trip, but preserves working outdoors in the light and helps increase mood. Sometimes rules like one walking trip, fill up all three of rest, recreation, and comfort have their exceptions. An extreme scenario like this one would be an exception. Step two, tweak. Same concept of watching the walking trips. Step three, shift. Same concept of light and social issues as before. Example three, what if the chef researcher is a very neurotic tortured artist? Step one is choose. The furthest chef walks from the base is to help planting sometimes. They spend most of their time cooking and researching in the light. Mood matters more than light and more than walking trips. Time for the biphasic schedule. The tweak and shift steps are still the same as before. The biphasic schedule is very easy to fit into the standard 10 hours of darkness. Shift it to wherever you like. If you settle far from the equator, try to fit one part of the biphasic rest and recreation around midnight. Example four. Unfortunately, our poor hunter has gotten muscle parasites. That's likely mood hits of minus five from being sick and minus 10 from intense pain. Also, the rest fall rate increase means this pawn can't handle a standard 24 hour day, one long sleep kind of schedule. A standard colonist can stay awake for about 16 to 18 hours before they start getting negative, drowsy thoughts. A standard colonist in most beds sleep for six to eight hours. That's a 24 hour schedule. About 16 awake and about eight asleep. A parasite ridden or mechanite infested colonist can only stay awake about 10 hours before they start getting penalties. Then they need eight to 10 hours of sleep. That's 20 hours. That doesn't quite fit into the standard 24 hour one sleep schedule. Choose. Biphasic. Mood's an issue here. Standard one sleep schedule doesn't work. The biphasic schedule is essentially tailor-made for muscle parasites and mechanites. Tweak and shift, same as before. Unfortunately for Hunter, he's still staggeringly ugly, bloodlust, and he breathes creepily. Make sure they are offset from the other colonists. We started with a standard schedule with two recreation for each colonist, then we added some traits and some health conditions. Now our three colonist schedules look like this. Example number five, quick sleeper, excellent quality beds, or anyone with reduced sleep needs. A quick sleeper colonist in an excellent bed needs a little less than five hours of sleep. Like a regular healthy colonist, a quick sleeper can stay awake for 18 hours before getting the drowsy mood penalty. That's 23 hours in total. Quick sleeper trait, extreme quality beds, and other bonuses can cause a 24 hour schedule to not be a perfect fit. Option number one. If light matters and mood's good, stick with the standard schedule. Light can be more important than the occasional drowsy thought or quick nap. Option two, if mood matters more, go to the biphasic schedule. The quick sleeper will take two very short naps. Total sleep time will be the same. Sleep will simply be split into two parts and be more consistent. No more drowsy thoughts or occasional naps. Option number three, if mood is great and light doesn't matter, you can go to the all anything schedule. Let them work as much as they can and solve any problems that arise on their own. All anything means your colonist will automatically fix rest or recreation when it gets low. Example number six, the forced work miner. 
This example base needs plasteel, and the only place to get it is this deep drill far from the base. Someone needs to work here. It is a long walk, and their mood might suffer, but if they have a breakdown, we'll send someone else. We need that plasteel. Time to schedule some work. You could consider biphasic work, which allows a midday meter fill up, but costs an additional walking trip. Keep in mind that this person will ignore their problems on the work schedule. If anything terrible happens and they miss either sleep or recreation, they're not going to fix it. In this example, we don't care. The Plasio won't mine itself and we need it. Now, schedule the work. The recreation paired with sleep fills up all the meters in one walking trip. The anything after sleep allows a colonist to possibly get more sleep if needed or hit recreation if it was missed or start working if everything is good. And our final example, example seven. The triphasic schedule. Sometimes there are serious mood problems that are so significant that productivity does not matter at all. All that matters is keeping these colonists from mentally breaking. There's a high psychic drone and our male colonists are not having a good day. The colonist's spouse also recently died and they're going to be extremely unhappy for 30 days. We've accepted a quest with visitors who expect good accommodations and won't do any work. The only thing that matters is keeping them happy. Scheduling can significantly help with mood for all of these colonists. We're going beyond biphasic here and bringing out the elusive, emergency, triphasic schedule. With this, we're going to try to keep the comfort bar in the plus 10 mood range and the recreation meter in the plus 10 mood range as well. The triphasic schedule is three sleep, five recreation, and just repeat that three times. On the triphasic schedule, the colonists will repeatedly fill up their comfort meter by hopping into bed every eight hours. While awake, colonists will refill the recreation meter anytime it drops below 95%. Essentially, the colonists will perform one or two work tasks and then do recreation. Productivity will be significantly reduced due to all the walking trips for recreation. The triphasic schedule is for when mood is the only thing that matters. As I said earlier, there's no singular best way to schedule your colonists. Different colonists, base layouts, and play styles will have very different needs. First, choose what things are most important to you. Productivity, mood, light. Then pick a schedule that fits your needs. Options include the standard schedule, the forced work schedule, the all anything schedule, the biphasic, or in dire times, even the triphasic schedule. Other schedules not shown here can be fantastic options as well. There's no one way to play RimWorld. If you want a schedule that works well for everyone virtually all the time and that you really just never have to think about, then put everyone on the standard biphasic schedule. Two recreation, followed by four sleep, six anything, and then repeat. That schedule is extremely good, but if you want to take the extra time and effort, you can do better by choosing the schedule that is right for you and the specific colonist, then tweaking and shifting it according to the specific scenario. And that does it. So hopefully this RimWorld scheduling guide has helped you to understand scheduling in RimWorld and choose the best schedule for you. If you enjoyed this RimWorld guide or it helped you out at all, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, leaving a comment down below, and sharing it with others. If you'd like to reference a written version of this guide or access the infographic I used during the guide itself, be sure to head over to my website, adamverseseverything.com guides. And as always, thank you for watching.